I need to be quick. There's a ton of things to discuss in today's video. Learn the latest reports involving Nkunku, Usman Dembele, Mason Mount, Conor Gallagher, Loftus Cheek, as well as much more, you guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Help me get over 2K likes, get involved in the comments. And now, let me get one quick plug out of the way first. Now that sanctions have finally been lifted from our club, that can really only mean one thing. And of course, that means the Club Mega Store is now open and back in action. Of course, you guys, you can find links below in the description to find the affiliate links. And if you click on them, you get access to my discount code to get 10% off your final order. As you can see here, a host of options available to buy right now. So what are you waiting for? There's a ton of great options available at great discounts as well too. You'll find links below in the description. And without wasting any more time. So now we start with the first story and I kind of want to get this story out of the way first so we can talk about better things. And this afternoon, The Sun released an article suggesting that Yaman United are monitoring Mason Mount on the request of their new manager in Ten Hag. And either way, the report suggests that Ten Hag is looking at Mason Mount's contract situation. We know that he has two years left on his 88 K per week deal at this point in time. And we know that Mount's long-term future hasn't been secured at this point in time. Now, when I read the article, some of the arguments that they were literally reporting on was the fact that, you know, due to protracted contract talks, of course, maybe this is why Mason Mount is going to be available in the window. But I'm just kind of thinking to myself, hmm, I wonder why over the past few months we haven't been able to enter new contract talks with Mason Mount and other players. I wonder what stopped us of these past few months from doing that. Mm. But regardless, you guys, they say that Ten Hag has been a fan of Mason Mount ever since he had his loan spell at Vitesse all them seasons back in the Eredivisie. And actually, when he was the manager at Ajax, you know, he was actually interested in bringing Mason Mount on loan after his loan spell at Vitesse. So, you know, there is something behind this report, even though we all know already, Mason Mount will not be leaving us. The report states that there have been discreet inquiries made by clubs like Man City and Liverpool as well too, which is a real thing. And you just know that if they had the possibility to sign him, I mean, he's securing their mids for like 10 years straight. Regardless, we already know that Todd Bowley plans to give long-term deals to him, Reese James, Kansai, plus many others in the team as well. But before I end this report, I just want to say what the reasoning could be behind this report to begin with and interest from other clubs. And essentially, let me use Declan Rice as an example now. He is refusing to sign new deals because he wants his contract to wind down. And normally, because players are on big contracts, long deals, you know, clubs need to, uh, you know, amortize the cost of these transfer deals. If a player wants to leave, subliminally, what they tend to do is let their contracts go down to the final two years because, of course, that's like the most affordable time to purchase them. So normally when that happens, that's when clubs kind of know, okay, let's try and make a move now. Maybe there's a hint that potentially he could be open to a move. And that's that. But we know that Mount loves the club. We love Mount and Burnley loves Mount as well too. So we now move on to the next story. And now it's time to talk about Usman Dembele plus other forward targets we are looking at this summer. Now the latest reports surrounding Usman Dembele are actually confirmed by quite a few reporters. There's literally like multiple confirmed reports suggesting that Dembele has been waiting for our takeover deal to finally get completed so he can fully, fully assess all best possible options. We know one option that won't be happening anymore is Paris Saint-Germain and courtesy of the amazing Twitter account in H. Grimes, he actually reports that Paris Saint-Germain presented their offer to Dembele months and months back. Now Dembele was open to seeing what the offer was but didn't act on that. He didn't really give them any attention back and as we've known from other reports over the past few weeks, Dembele is an interest in making return back to Ligue 1. One thing that is a fact though is that Thomas Tuchel is desperate to work with his former protégé again. You know from previous comments made by Tuchel on Dembele that Tuchel did state that he's probably the most talented player he's ever worked with due to that fake ability on his left foot and on his right foot as well. Me personally, I kind of feel like we have probably an 80% chance of signing Usman Dembele. I think it's quite obvious. Number one, Tuchel factor, London. New owners, money, signing on fee, free agent. And when you look at other big clubs around, you know, Man City don't need him. He won't be going to Man United. Liverpool could be an option. Bayern are an option as well too. But these aren't the strongest competition in my personal opinion, considering what we can offer the player and the money and finances we can provide. Dembele's contract officially ends with Barcelona 
at the end of next month. And reports are starting to suggest that Dembele does have a desire actually to work with Thomas Tuchel again. So it does seem like things will be brewing and cooking up a lot over these next few weeks and months and involving Dembele. It's going to be very exciting and it should be easier now knowing you don't have to negotiate with Barcelona. It does seem like if we are waiting for our takeover deal to finish, I mean, it is kind of hinting towards what the player is possibly thinking alongside his agent. Let's see what happens, my friends. But right now, I think we've got to move on to the other stories. And we have to talk about Raheem Sterling and we have to talk about Christopher and Kunku. Now, I'm going to talk about both these guys together. We start with Nkunku. And essentially, we all know that RB Leipzig don't want to sell the player right now. You know, they're looking to offer him a new contract, which will give him a pay rise, not necessarily giving him more years on top of his existing deal. But with this contract, he will have a set release clause in which, of course, he can leave at the end. That doesn't mean, though, that Nkunku actually wasn't open to moving this summer, as he kind of feels like he spent enough time there. You know, last season he got 35 goals plus 14 assists, absolutely unreal numbers. And the player personally feels like he's currently at a turning point and is definitely open to moving in the summer. I guess the only solution in which we could persuade RB Leipzig to sell the player is to offer crazy amounts of money and potentially offer players involved or maybe, you know, sell some of our players to them for like a good fee or price. Would Werner maybe consider going back to Leipzig? Would he even have much of a choice, to be honest? I'm not seeing too many links currently in for the player, so who knows what could happen. But would some of you guys be interested in that little uh, French link up for next season? Kunde, Dembele, and Kunku as well too. I mean, you're looking at three players that will probably be French international first team players for the foreseeable future. Basically, we'd have to make an official offer inquiry to really force Nkunku to make a decision. Of course, we've spoken to the player over the past few months and weeks, lots of, you know, informal exploratory talks, which is pretty standard in transfer deals. But we must make our interests concrete by, of course, presenting something to RB Leipzig to force Nkunku to make a decision. Moving on to Raheem Sterling and we know that Sterling is definitely on the target list, not necessarily the priority, but of course due to the fact that he's an experienced top class player who's kind of the highest level for how many years right now. You know, he's got one year left in his deal. It does seem like potentially he won't be renewing at Man City at this point in time. Well, it looks like there is strong competition now all of a sudden from Real Madrid with Sterling, of course, being very interested in making a move to the Bernabeu. Ideally, I'm hoping that doesn't happen. I still got hopes that Eden Hazard is going to come back next season. You know, all those injury issues and, and wrongs be left in the past. He's going to absolutely come back on fire. You know, for one of our legends, I think that's the only thing he deserves. And he's been so bitterly unlucky with the injuries. But feels like maybe he's done his lesson now that he's starting to look after himself a lot more. And, and how he ended that season at Real Madrid, it was reported that he's not feeling as much discomfort now from his ankle. So could Madrid be making a mistake? Who knows about that? But it does feel now that Raheem Sterling is getting lower and lower on the priority list. So let's see what happens with that. I guess to continue on, other reports would suggest that other targets like Darwin Nunes, Lewandowski, they're still players on the target list, but I'm not sure on the highest end of the scale. I'd probably say that I'd probably end Kunku and others are probably a lot higher. Maybe Nunes is right in the middle. For me, I really like the player. I think he's got the potential to be world-class. I think he's outstanding. For me, I think he would be a Chelsea striker that could definitely be an amazing replacement for Lukaku. But we have to see what happens with more reports. I'm, I'm still waiting for something more concrete and substantial. I, I, I need to find out something about Darwin Nunes. But uh, moving on, you guys, we've got two final stories to end today's video. Right now, we turn our attentions to probably one of my favorite players. You know, we, we all have like certain soft spots for certain players. And that's Ruben Loftus Cheek because Maurizio Sarri seems to not be giving up on his former player. And this season, he's actually trying to tempt Loftus Cheek to depart us to sign for Lazio. Now, Ruben's contract does end in 2024, and reports are suggesting that he could be made available if a 20 million offer is presented to the club. He's on around like 3.5 million a year for his salary. Reports are saying in Italy that Lazio would even look to up that deal maybe to like 4.5, 4 million to entice the player. It continues Sari's interest in the player from last season. However, SMS, uh, Milinkovic Savic, and of course, Luis Alberto, they probably are going to stay. But if for any reason, either one of them are sold, Loftus Cleek will become Lazio's number one target in midfield. I'm going to give my thoughts and opinions. You know, I can imagine on one hand, you know, there's logic from a lot of people where they're thinking, yeah, the club are trying to move on and evolve. 
maybe we should be considering selling Loftus Cleek to, you know, collect some funds and reinvest that back into the team. But I'll give you guys my opinion, my opinion. I'm going to use Real Madrid as an example, and I'm going to use Vasquez and Fernandez as players I'm going to use as my examples. Now, these guys have come from the Madrid Academy, the setup, they've been there forever. They're not necessarily first team stars, but they accept that. They're there for the squads. They increase competition. They're valuable members. You can trust and rely upon them whenever you need to turn to them for whatever reasons in games. And for me, you know, a lot of times as fans, I think we focus too much on first 11s instead of thinking about the overall quality of, of what you need to have in the squads. You know, not every player in your first 11 has to have ambitions of playing week in, week out every single game. It just isn't realistic. I do think that there is importance in keeping and maintaining players like a Loftus League where, I mean, we've seen this season how valuable he's been. Playing in defence, playing in the two-man mids uh, in Jorginho's role, playing further up, playing as a wing-back playing so many different positions that I haven't seen and he has been a very reliable figure in every position he's played in. Uh, he hasn't had a bad season for me, played 40 games and I think for me this is like the best reward for a player who had suffered a lot of injuries especially as he was like, um, you know, he got that growth spurt which was affecting his back, uh, he got really tall of a sudden and then of course uh, the terrible unfortunate injury he picked up in a friendly that never should have happened before a European final, which sets him back ridiculously. For other players, which happens in football time and time again, injuries can cost you because number one, the discipline you need to get back to the very best is hard. It takes dedication, it takes mental um, fortitude as well too. But Loftus Cleek has always been that type of guy. I, I just keep hearing about it all the time. I, I know that he's popular within the group. I know that a lot of the youngest like Mountain James was looking up to Loftus Cleek over the years as well too. He is very well respected. And for me, the dedication he's shown to get back to literally like, to bring back the entire muscle in his leg, the dedication to get up to do the, you know, your rehabilitation, training, training, training. I just don't think that with someone with a character like that, I don't see how that doesn't benefit our squads, especially when he's proven to be a very reliable player to use. And I'm seeing examples everywhere in Europe of, you know, players like your Vasquez's and Fernandez's that, you know, they play another important part to help strengthen the overall team. I would probably keep him, but at the same time, I'd also be open to him going if the player decided, you know what, I do want to focus on playing in my main position under a manager that completely knows me. If that happens, of course, we do have options in the squad. So I'm looking at Ampadu, who I think could be a very interesting option for this season. And maybe, I think I might have to do a video, you guys, just talking about, you know, the Chelsea squads and ins and outs. So if you want to see that, let me know in the comments. But now we end things by talking about the future of Conor Gallagher. Now, good news for Gallagher fans. Reported today that Tuchel has given Gallagher assurances that he won't be just a bit part player for next season. Once the season ended, Tuchel held talks with Gallagher. They spoke for a while talking about his plans and his future and Gallagher is very happy. Last season, the guy secured eight goals and three assists in the league. I think that the second half of the season was a little bit harder in the sense that Naturally, you know, teams, when they clocked how good Gallagher was, had plans for him. And, you know, I actually remember the same thing happened to Kai Havertz too after his, like, first breakout season. Second season, first half is really hard for him. It's, it's normal at this age. But uh, I do think that Gallagher is going to be a top option for our midfield. I kind of see Gallagher as our Barella, as our Nico Barella. Um, of course, with all these Lukaku reports, I was kind of thinking, wouldn't it be sick to try and make, like, a, an offer for Barella in exchange? But then I remembered what we've got Conor Gallagher who, Kind of has the same role stylistically. Uh, of course, very happy for the player. Great to see. Uh, I'll keep things absolutely real. I've always known about Gallagher, but I didn't really pay as much attention towards him. I don't really focus on him until his first Lawrence at Charlton and then how he progressed at Swansea and then West Brom and then of course this season at Crystal Palace. Gallagher comes back a more complete player. He spoke about how Patrick Vieira was a great influence on his game in terms of coaching the player and giving him advice and I think when you're getting advice from one of the greatest Premier field players, I think that's literally an amazing thing. So regardless, that is all the news that came out today. If the more news does drop this evening, I'm just going to release it tomorrow instead. And on that note, I'm in the FC, this is Blue Lines TV. Catch you guys later with some more videos. Cool.